The list of emulations depends on a thing called gun class. Right? And you're only going to get the list of emulations to choose from that match the current gun class that the weapon is in. Right? Being handgun, rifle, submachine gun, machine gun, right? So if you're looking for you know, your P90 emulation and you'll set your damage gun obviously as a machine gun, you're not going to find it. It's not on the list, right? Now why is it why is this so well the idea of the gun class was to pretty much say, look, what you see is what you get principle. And the idea was that look, really, anything that's small, looking like roughly the size of a submachine gun, probably should be some type of submachine gun, right? And if it is a sort of medium carbine rifle size, well, it should work like some sort of rifle. And if it's a big machine gun thing, it's going to be some sort of machine gun. So there was this idea of a gun class we put in there, and uh, and so you get the list of those. Um, generally, the weapon emulations uh, we we use P90s for all our submachine guns all the time. Uh, we don't use, unless we're running a special scenario. We don't use any other ones. Now I know there's 6090 for weapon emulations. Um, and there's pretty cool ones in there, like musket. Musket's fun. Yeah, yeah. You go musket battles and um, there's some bolt action rifles and some various. And it's great because you've got the pistol now because we need to start using the handgun emulations. Um, so that's cool. Um, <coughs> after that, you're generally the hit points. Uh, that's where you can hit before they're dead. You guys know that, that's really obvious. Uh, as I said, we'll keep it low. Uh, and then the language setting. Now, the only thing that's tricky about the language other than it tells you what language it's going to talk to them in. Uh, R&D wise, uh, I am, it's on our list, that for a lot of the languages, particularly the European languages, when you set the language also change exactly what wording is used on the display. So there is a plan to put Spanish and it'll actually have Spanish writing. I know it's it's on the list, specified, just a lot of things to get done. Um, it's usually job stuff, we try to put yours in first. But, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy. He's, he's got me up because you notice the new ones for the light flashes works great. Yeah, you know what team it's on. Yeah, yeah. That's a huge feature, Johnson. If I really want this, though, no, that's a good idea. Um, confuse my stuff. This is kind of crazy. Why is it flashing every time we turn it off? Staff the first two. Yeah, that's good. So, but if you set it to laser tag, say, uh, settings, if that's what you use. Um, the reason I mention it because if you, it actually gives you two extra master controller functions, which I'll cover in the master controller. But it, you only see them if you're on laser tag; it's only relevant to laser tag. So, and also all the uh, displays change when they're in a live game. So if you're on laser tag sounds, it doesn't say uh, K for kills; it says D for deactivations, and instead of saying H for hits, it says T for tags. You know, and for some people, that's great; that really suits them. Um, right. So that's that's it. all the other ones are pretty obvious. You put it in, you know. Uh, Spanish is going to talk to you in Spanish. Right? That's obvious. Uh, that's, that's actually it for the main left menus. The right ones, there's a few tricks in that one. Um, and the first one up is uh, reset. Uh, basically, into. I actually never use this anymore, but the idea of the reset is when you push the right button, is to actually set it back to factory defaults. Basically, it's a, it's a reset the gun back to default. Um, this is now being replaced by the master controller command called target reset. And that sets it back to factory defaults, and that's a lot quicker. <laughs> a lot easier going in for a reach one and cheap doing a reset. But um, there are times, you know, you know, if you just pick up a gun, you don't know what last person set it to. If you do a reset, it sets it back to defaults, then it's often a lot easier to change things to what you want from defaults rather than trying to correct what the last guy was doing. Right? I, that was my experience. We didn't have it in the first versions. And forever, every single game you're going, going through the menu, he's checking them, what have they done, what have they done? If you do take a reset, well, or a, gun, a reset from the menu, you don't need to do that. It saves a lot of time and hassle. So the next thing comes up is the mode. Um, Satar, the idea was that we have one version of code, um, and that is the same code does everything that any that can do. So for example, you can actually configure any gaming gun to be a medic box, which we discussed yesterday, or an ammunition box. And I have done that. I can tell you, we've gone out with two medic boxes and some kid has stood on my uh, button, which is my respawn button. So I suppose yeah, we tell them not to do that, isn't it? Right, yeah, don't go up to it and go, bang. You know, usually the briefing with, you know, right. So you respawn by going up to your box and pushing it with your finger. 
Now, did I mention anything there about using my finger? Yes, I did, right. That doesn't include your foot. So, because otherwise it gets mud in there and all bad. So if they break it, I will sometimes grab a spare gaming gun, switch it, turn it to a medic box, and I tell them, if you go back there, just shoot yourself with this and you respawn. There you go, it works. I'm surprised. It's a major emergency, but it does. It's really handy to just switch anything to anything. Yes? Sir. 